Okay. Well, tonight we're going to learn how to change oil. <laughs> Who's changed oil before? I know you have. Kaylin has. All the guys have. Pam has. I have. We're going to talk about changing oil. Who knows what that is? No guesses? Mazola. What's that? <laughs> Mazola oil. You guys are quiet. Well, I know what it is. <laughs> it's dirty oil and clean oil. Oh. That's pretty obvious, right? So you can tell from this picture. There's clean oil that you put in your engine. You run it for a while and the nasty stuff comes out. Why is it nasty when it comes out? Because of the carbon from the combustion. Carbon from the emissions. Stuff that's filtered out. That's why it's dirty. I want to show you this little video clip here. Greetings, viewers. Eric the Car Guy here. Can you in hear it? In today's video, I'd like to talk a little bit about what happens when you don't change the oil in your engine for a really long time. I'm working on this 2002 RL today uh, that has the 3.5 liter engine, and I can tell that in its past that it had extended oil change intervals. And the reason I can tell this is because, one, there's a massive oil leak, and oil leaks are very common in vehicles that don't get the oil changed frequently enough. And here's a perfect example of what happens to all, not just the valve cover gaskets, but all of the rubber seals in an engine suffer this fate over time. You know how hard that is? How brittle? That should not stand up on end like that at all. In fact, they could probably break it. Yeah. See how brittle? Same with these. And as they become brittle, they no longer seal. So the rubber needs to be pliable, it needs to conform to temperatures and all that. It can't do this. This is the new seal that I'm about to pull, put in, and you can see that it's all rubber and pliable. Here's an old cam seal, and here's an... So he goes on with more of the same. Could you guys kind of hear him? Was it loud enough to hear? What does that have to do with blood? Well, that has a lot to do with blood, because just like with an engine, if you don't change the oil and keep the oil clean, those seals get hard and brittle, and it's like us with our blood. If our blood is dirty, then our blood vessels get hard and brittle and stiff and they don't work right. We can end up with hypertension or other issues. So you can see how the blood, the red blood cells in this slide here that you can see, they have to line up one by one to get through the capillaries. And if our blood is not of a good quality, and we're going to look at some blood tonight, it won't be able to line up and get through the small capillaries. So you may end up with vision problems, brain fog, you know, pain in your extremities and things like that. So, and I kind of went into this a little bit, there, there's an increase of a risk of stroke when the blood, and I'm, I'm kind of kind of going to kind of get a little ahead of myself a little bit if I'm not careful, but if we're not careful with our diet and our lifestyle, our blood will be a poor quality. If you remember the slide, the opening slide there, it said the life of the flesh is where? In the blood. In the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Okay, I have another little video that I want you to see here. You can see what blood looks like actually flowing in those little capillaries. You see how the blood cells have to line up in order to get through? They have to be very fluid and not stuck together to get through. If you can see them where they go through that bend right there, they have to be unclumped to really flow through those capillaries properly. I have no idea how they took this video, but I think that's so cool. So... If we were to look at blood under the microscope, which we're going to do tonight, this is what it should look like. You should see individual red blood cells and not clumped together, okay? This is actually my blood, but it's only my blood after I did a lot of therapies because my blood normally looks more like this. This is Pam's blood. We took her blood right before and I dropped this slide in, okay? 
there's a lot of stickiness here. And her husband said she doesn't like to drink enough water. So that could be an issue. There's a lot of things that can cause this. So we're not diagnosing anything here tonight. I'm just simply wanting to expose you to something that could be an underly underlying cause of a lot of problems without you even realizing it. We took my mother-in-law to, my chiropractor does what's called live blood analysis where she looks at the blood and she, you know, sees how, if it's sticky or free. You know, if we go back a slide, you know, you can see there. I can show you on my phone mom's before and after. Her blood was all stacked up like a roll of coins. That is called rouleau. It's, a, it's French and it, it's when they're stacked up like a, it, it just kind of means roll and they look like a roll of coins. You can see in this, it's a little bit, we can magnify it a little bit bigger and focus a little bit better, but the blood should not look like that. It should not be all clumped like that. How easy would it be, you saw the video with the capillaries going through, how easy would it be for this blood to flow through the tiny little capillaries in your eye, in your fingertips? Well, it's not gonna work. You're gonna end up having Pain and a lot of other problems can come from this too. Well, what is it that is causing this? It's actually, you can see up here, increased fibrin and globulins, with are, which are proteins in the blood that, that is actually the underlying thing that's happening here. But there's other things that can cause it too. We're going to see a video in just a minute. Wi-Fi can cause this. Your, your, your internet connection at home. If, you're, if you have a Wi-Fi router, it can cause this. Um, part of what's causing my issue, when I, had, um, when I was at my sickest with Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, you can ask Kalen, we went to get lab work done on me one day, and my blood was so thick and sticky, it would not even come out of the needle. It, when it did come out, it, was, it looked like burnt motor oil. It was thick and sludgy and very sticky. And that was because I had this infection with the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. They had to dilute my blood 256 times before they saw no rickettsial bacteria. That's how bad the infection was that I had. And mold will do the same thing, you know, and that's what I'm dealing with now is the mold exposure. Poor dietary choices, and as we mentioned earlier, dehydration can contribute to this as well. Toxins in the environment, things that they're spraying on us, things that, that farmers are spraying on the crops, the pesticides, which are toxins on our foods, these can all contribute to that. Poor air quality, a lack, you know, if you, don't, if you don't know, the red blood cells carry oxygen. How much oxygen are you gonna be able to carry to your tissues with that picture that we saw back here with it all clumped up? Are you going to be able to keep oxygen in your brain? What happens if you can't oxygenate your, your organs, your brain, your heart, your lungs, your kidneys, your liver? Are you going to end up with damage in these? Is it possible? Yes, absolutely it is. Lack of exercise and lack of sunlight. Sunlight actually helps to increase the electrical charge on these red blood cells so that they expel one another instead of being sticky, stuck together. Why is this an issue? We've been talking about it throughout this little presentation. It, it decreases the blood flow through the capillaries. It leads to lack of oxygen and you, you can't get nutrition to your cells. So your cells become sick and toxic. You can't get oxygen and nutrients to the cells Neither can the cells get rid of their toxins. So it leads to a toxic buildup in the system. Now this is the last slide right here, and it's a little short video, and I'm hoping you're going to be able to hear this. Um, but this is a lady that had good blood, and then I, wanna, I want you just to watch this and see what happened. When we're done with this, then we're going to check some of your blood. Live blood analysis and electroscope. <laughs> we can learn much by looking at our blood under a microscope. This short video shows a macrophage, which is like a vacuum cleaner, engulfing bacteria among red blood cells. I decided to find out what my blood looked like. 
I pricked my finger, placed a drop of blood on a slide, and looked at it under the microscope. This is what I saw. The cells are round, some are separate, and a few are sticking together. Overall, fairly healthy looking blood. This testing was done in a clean electromagnetic environment and I did not eat or drink before or during testing. I then worked on a computer for 70 minutes and looked at my blood again. This time, the cells are sticking together like stacked coins. This is called rouleau formation. Later that day, I used a cordless phone for 10 minutes and looked at my blood again. And this is what I saw. Very unhealthy looking blood. There are virtually no single cells. Most of the cells are now in rouleau formation. A doctor told me this is what she sees with cancer patients. What I learned is that my blood goes into rouleau formation when I use a computer or a mobile phone. This type of plumping interferes with the release of oxygen and the removal of waste products like carbon dioxide. The capillaries are so narrow that red cells must squeeze through in single file, showing the importance of their elasticity. What are the consequences of rouleau formation? Poor circulation resulting in lower oxygen transport to cells and reduced waste removal. What are the symptoms someone may experience? Headaches and fatigue, difficulty concentrating, numbness, tingling, and cold extremities, and possibly heart and blood pressure problems, including risk of stroke. What is the significance of this? Live blood analysis may be a good diagnostic for electrohypersensitivity. For more information about electrohypersensitivity, visit... Okay. So I hope that this has has helped you to at least think about your blood in a different way. What we want to do this summer is talk about things that we can do to help clean our blood. Okay, I know that we've talked a lot about detox and stuff like that, but we're going to actually go through the eight laws of health one by one, and, and let's just kind of zero in and focus on each one of those. Who knows what the eight laws of health are? Anybody? Nutrition. Nutrition, exercise, exercise. Water. water, sunshine, sunshine. sunshine. Temperance. temperance, air, air. fresh air, rest, rest. Trust in God. and trust in God. So we're going we're gonna to look at those laws of health epigenetically. Now that's a big word and we'll introduce that next time. Okay, Lyle has volunteered. You can't use alcohol on me, though. I'm allergic to it. Okay, we can do it without. Does, it Does everybody give permission to be on YouTube? If I don't show your face, we, we can... It's all that good German food. <laughs> it's just uh, that good German food will make you sticky blood. <laughs> It's, it's pretty clumped up. Let's pretty is, have you got it all the way? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. pretty thick. Well, at least I'm not the only one. It's moving well. <laughs> oh. Kimlin, where did you work? What did you do when you went to school? Where did you work in the medical? X-ray. X-ray. But we did this in high school and... They find good veins on me. We know that Wi-Fi... Um, Wi-Fi is a huge factor. Wi-Fi is a huge factor. In, it's, it's not the only factor, though. No. Well, I'm on Wi-Fi all the time. Yeah, I am too. Mother yep. Computer. Technology is a curse. Mm-hmm. Can be. That was just from drinking a thing of water and staying off the computer. Yeah, because hers before was really thick. Really very thick. So I just the water open added, you know, because our blood is 70. So just having Pam drink a bottle of water made her blood look better. 
it's still stacked up, as we can see. Yeah, I can't get this into focus very well. Yeah, it may be the slide itself. Yeah, could be.